Hey, I'm Kao, and this week I'm covering Led Zeppelin by Led Zeppelin. I have a German repressing from the 2010s here. This is Led Zeppelin's first album, released in January 1969, recorded in late 1968. Personnel is Robert Plant on lead vocals and harmonica, Jimmy Page on guitar, acoustic guitar, and backing vocals, John Paul Jones on bass, organ, and backing vocals, and John Bonham on drums, timpani, and back backing vocals. And produced by Glyn Johns. Love Glyn Johns here. Before I get into the recording details, I'm gonna go into the back story of how Led Zeppelin was formed. It all started when session guitarist Jimmy Page joined the band The Yardbirds as a replacement lead guitarist for Jeff Beck, who had just left the band in, in 1966. And Jimmy Page was basically the poster boy for The Yardbirds. In 1968, all members of The Yardbirds, except for Page and the bassist Chris Dreja, left the band. Basically, The Yardbirds had an entire Scandinavian tour that they had to fulfill for the next few months, so Jimmy and Chris were like, what do we do now? And so they just went to find new members. But while scouting out new members, Chris was actually just like, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do this anymore, and then just left. Now you'd think this means the this would mean that the Yardbirds are just completely dissolved, but no. Jimmy went around and he found a bunch of musicians so that he could fulfill the tour with. He got session bassist JP Jones on bass, and he found the drummer and lead singer of a little obscure band called the Band of Joy from England, John Bonham on drums, who was also a jazz drummer, and Robert Plant on vocals. Now with this, they toured Scandinavia as the New Yardbirds, and started recording and toying around with some new material in the studio. Basically, a little bit before they um, completed their album, the former members of the Yardbirds were like, actually, you can't use the new Yardbirds as the name because we'll sue you. So Jimmy was thinking long and hard of what to name their band, and then he remembered something his buddy Keith Moon said. Something about a metal balloon. And he thought that this was so genius that he just kind of made a different variation of that name, and now we have Led Zeppelin. And they released Led Zeppelin 1, January 12th, 1969. Now let's get into the recording. <laughs> Recording sessions took place from September to October 1968 in Olympic Studios. Page and Plant started writing new material right at the start um, of their Scandinavian tour when they were still the new Yardbirds. In total, recording the album only took up like 36 hours of recording time spread out over the span of a few weeks. During recording, uh, Jimmy Page used his rainbow-colored Strat given to him by Jeff Beck in 1965 after Page recommended that Beck join the Yardbirds after Eric Clapton left. Like I said earlier, it was both produced and engineered by both Paige and Glenn Johns, who both knew each other from childhood, but from living in the same suburb in England. And when mixed, it was actually one of the first albums that was stereo only, because most albums before 1969 were all mono. So, something worth mentioning, on some of the songs, Plant's vocals are so loud that it bleeds on into other tracks. You can just hear his vocals very faintly in the background of some songs. Now, this is just a brief thing on the release of the album. Jimmy Page really didn't like releasing singles, so they only released one single from this album, which was Good Times, Bad Times, backed with Communication Breakdown. And for most of their career, they only released one, if no, singles per album. Let's get into the track by track breakdown. <laughs> Number one is Good Times, Bad Times. Now this is one of the more radio friendly tracks on the album and it was the first and only a-side single of this album it's a really good introduction to led zeppelin because it really just sounds like led zeppelin it sounds like someone used ai to make a led zeppelin type beat and it would be good times bad times and it's that's really what you want if you want the perfect opening track to your opening debut album plus it shows off the skills of everyone in the band plants wailing kind of annoying vocals, Jimmy Page's guitar, John Bonham's loud booming drums, and John Paul Jones's lead guitar-esque bass. Yes, I said Robert Plant's vocals are a little annoying. Sometimes they are. Track number two is Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You is basically a reworking of Anne Breeden's song of the same name, 
and Paige first heard this song on a Joan Baez live album from 1962. Zeppelin's version of the song really doesn't bear too much resemblance to Breeden's version or even Joan Baez's version. It's kind of just its own thing. Plus there are some rewritten lyrics in there and it's sort of the first introduction of the Led Zeppelin folk, which is one of Led Zeppelin's, you know, that's kind of what they're most well known for other than like loud stadium rock is British folk. Number three is You Shook Me, a Willie Dixon cover, one of many Willie Dixon covers. Yeah, Led Zeppelin has a tricky history of, with blues and stealing blues, but I'm not gonna talk about that with this album. Maybe some other album, but I really don't feel like talking about that right now, because that would that warrants really its own, its, its own video. <laughs> Plant and Paige both take turns doing an organ solo on this song, which sounds pretty nice. Another thing, Jeff Beck covered this on his 1968 album, Truth, and Jeff Beck really didn't like how they essentially copied the arrangement he used for this song on their album. Track number four is Dazed and Confused, written by Jake Holmes as a sort of folk song in 1967. When Paige was in the Yardbirds, they covered Dazed and Confused quite a lot on television appearances, on radio appearances, and on live albums, concerts, not live albums. This song, to me at least, is my favorite on the album. The drums, the bass line, the guitar, and the vocals are practically perfect on this song. Jimmy Page uses his violin bow on the guitar, which makes a cool psychedelic sound. John Bonham beats the crap out of his drums. Robert Plant screams and wails, and JP Jones sits quietly in the corner plucking at his bass. Jake Holmes actually sued Jimmy Page for not crediting him at all on this song. it The credits is literally just by page, which is completely incorrect because the lyrics were completely written by Jake Holmes. Coming up side two is Your Time Is Gonna Come. It starts with this really lengthy organ solo by JP Jones, which personally I think could have been cut back at least a minute. And then it's just like this gospel song, sort of. It's gospel-y. It's weird. But then it fades into the second track on side two, Black Mountain Side. Black Mountain Side is um, based on a rock arrangement of the folk song Black Waterside. It was also often played during the Page era of the Yardbirds. Next is Communication Breakdown, which was the B-side to Good Times, Bad Times, and also one of the more well-known songs on the album. Communication Breakdown was one of the first songs that Led Zeppelin, sorry, Led Zeppelin worked on as a band. It was played in concert when they were still the new Yardbirds. It's very distinctively a Jimmy Page riff. In fact, this riff specifically was one of the main influences on the Ramones guitarist Johnny Ramone. And you can definitely hear some communication breakdown in some early Ramones songs. It's also pretty heavily used in live sets throughout Led Zeppelin's career. I Can't Quit You Baby is another Willie Dixon tune. It is one of the more laid back songs on this album. This is one of the songs that really kick-started the British blues mania in the late 60s and early 70s. It's just a revival of blues music. And lastly, there's How Many More Times. The clock's in at 8 minutes and 27 seconds. And it's sort of like a musical suite. It changes genre, I feel like, a lot of times in the song. It almost starts out jazzy a little bit and then really just <laughs> picks up. And it's actually one of my least favorite tracks on the album. It just drags. It eight and a half minutes long. It's like, it didn't need to be that long, personally. Concludes the track by track breakdown. Now let's get into my thoughts. Led Zeppelin one is okay. It's not my favorite Led Zeppelin album. My favorite Led Zeppelin album is Led Zeppelin four and I will be covering that sometime. And that's everyone's favorite, so it doesn't really matter, but you know. It seems rushed, and it's a good introduction to the band as it does capture a lot of the sounds that they would, you know, go on to do in the future, like the hard blaring rock and the English folk. But out of the first four self-titled albums, I think it is one of the weaker ones. And there are some classics on it, but at this point they hadn't established themselves as these arena rock or classic rock gods like they would in the next, in the few coming years. At this point, they were basically just a Fleetwood Mac copy. This this album could pass as an early Fleetwood Mac album. Just your average British blues band, really. Totally off topic, but I find it really funny how they're all like posh British dudes. 
I don't know why I find that so funny, but I do. But yeah, that about that about does it. It's an okay album. I think this video is gonna be a little shorter than my other ones, but oh well. I found a good time for all of the videos yet. The first two are like almost 30 minutes, and then Queen's like 12 minutes, and then Rubber Soul's 15 minutes, which is like the ideal time, I think 15 to 20. And then this one's also probably gonna be like 10 to 12 minutes. But anyway, yeah, that was Led Zeppelin 1. Bye, bozos. Thank <laughs> you.